Good morning all. Today I'm going to take a look at this power bank which has been very kindly supplied by EC Technology and I think it kind of represents a, a sort of second generation of these eight cell power banks. Right so let's open this thing up. Uh, thank you and we have a little manual here and here's the power bank and it's a very similar form factor to um, previous eight cell power banks, although it is actually slightly bigger. Let's have a quick look at that. So here's a, a previous um, eight cell EC technology power bank. Um, now this one is 22,400, 22,400 milliamp hours. And the new one is actually a higher capacity. It's 26,800 milliamp hours. Now I don't think the actual cells themselves are going to be any bigger in this power bank. So they must have allocated a little more space for the circuit board. And that's perhaps not surprising because uh, this one has quick charge three compatible output. Uh, it also has two micro USB B uh, inputs, which you simply parallel in order to charge this thing more quickly. You just use two leads. And as far as I'm aware, the two leads are in here. Yes, there they are. So you just parallel them up and then you'll use a multi output port uh, adapter, a bit like this thing here. This is a car one, but you can see how it works. You simply use two sockets on your uh, charging adapter, two cables, plug them into these two sockets and the power bank will charge at twice the maximum rate for an older style power bank. 2.4 amps would have been uh, the maximum charge current for this. This one, presumably 4.8. In fact, here's the specification. The input is five volts, four amps, uh, two amps max on each of the two ports. So uh, you can, well, it will only draw two amps through each of those two ports. By using both cables, you're charging this power bank at four amps. Right, let's have a quick look around this power bank before I take it apart, because I'm gonna do that on this one. I'm gonna actually uh, break it all apart and it probably won't come apart uh, very elegantly but uh, so we've seen the two uh, micro B USB uh, sockets for charging the power bank here are the outputs um, now there are some little legends on here I'll see if I can focus on those oh it has uh, so that's the quick charge now some uh, EC technology are using green for the quick charge some other vendors use orange and green for their standard port so there doesn't seem to be any convention yet for that the standard ports, although they are auto detect, so these ones will uh, automatically detect what's connected and uh, change the values on the two center pins there to get the maximum current output. Here we have two standard ports and one quick charge three compatible port. And notice one other thing, there's no torch in amongst that lot, uh, on off switch. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, on the top surface here, we have a four LED uh, capacity indicator or state of charge indicator, actually. So uh, it simply tells you whether it's quarter, half, uh, three quarters or fully charged. And those LEDs, I seem to remember, were white. Yes, they are. Now, let's um, just have a mention of this torch thing. There's no torch on here, but is that such a big deal? Um, let's look at these two previous EC technology power banks. This one, double click to put the torch on, double click to turn it off. Yes, that's quite useful. This one, they uh, increase the capability of the torch, double click to turn it on dim. Oh, you can actually see it pulsing there. It must be pulse width modulated. Double click to turn it on bright, double click to put it into SOS mode. Now, I mean, how often are you going to want to send an SOS signal from your power bank? I do, I do think that the torch feature got a little bit crazy. Uh, so now no torch at all. Right, let's have a little look at quick charge. Uh, the power bank doesn't seem to have much charge in it, but that's come on there. We've got five volts. Now, of course the quick charge output isn't gonna put out anything other than five volts unless very specifically told to by whatever protocol is involved in quick charge. I can't remember the full details of it, but here I've got a little quick charge kind of uh, board which will force this thing to go into quick charge. If I press that button, we can force the quick charge output to nine volts. 
we can force it to 12 volts and if I press and hold this uh, it goes off I think I need to switch the power bank back on which is probably switch this off I press and hold this it goes into a mode where I can increment the voltage in 200 millivolt steps you can see there that it's going up by 0.2 of a volt every time I press this how quickly can I press it um, this goes all the way up to 12 volts at these 200 millivolt increments how long is it going to take to get to that not too long um, this does actually seem to go slightly beyond 12 volts there's 12 volts 12.2 12.4 12.6 12.8 I can actually get this to go right up to 13 volts but then it doesn't go any higher than that so that seems to be the limit using the 200 millivolt increment feature that quick charge 3 has right now the bit that uh, everyone wants to see which is what's inside here and uh, particularly what cells is this thing using if it has cells with some sort of code number on them we may be able to find out what brand they are we can have a go now I haven't got a spudger but what I do have is this rather nice uh, bone handled butter knife it's uh, made in England let's get in closer actually uh, yeah this is Lewis Rose and Co Limited stainless steel Sheffield England this is the real deal probably from the 1960s or something like that actually just before I start hacking it um, I've just seen this on the bottom edge capacity uh, 26 800 milliamp hours 95.48 watt hours the model is the PB05 I believe I think that was in the manual input uh, we've seen that from the manual 5 volts 4 amps now the outputs are 5 volts 3.1 amps that's interesting I didn't realize that with auto detect quick charge 3 output is 5 to 6 volts 3 amps 6 to 9 volts 2 amps and 9 to 12 volts at 1.5 amps well this is interesting um this knife is actually quite sharp on the cutting edge but can i get it in between the case halves and this central ring no i can't all i can do is dig bits of the plastic away so um the knife would be even better than a spudger here because the spudger wouldn't have the the knife's uh, sharp blade but i just can't get that into there and i'm just wondering actually whether they've used some sort of welding technique uh, all the way around here I think what this must be is that this ring has an outer edge and an inner edge and these case halves are, are clipped into it but uh, they just won't budge so it looks like I might have to use some additional force well now this thing won't spudge um, it won't budge so I think the knife actually is not going to work and I'm starting to think I'm going to have to start scoring down these edges uh, with a, a proper sharp knife which means keeping my fingers well out I caught it a bit there keeping my fingers well out of the way and seeing if I can uh, cut this open with this right the technique I'm now using is hammer and uh, Sheffield stainless steel knife and just pushing the knife in and breaching whatever's in there getting the knife to go to a certain depth and basically I'm just cutting my way around this power bank right well now I've managed to split it sufficiently that this uh, ring around the outside has actually come away as a separate piece so I think the, the way to proceed is to cut this and then actually peel it back around like a sardine can and then see what I can do uh, at the next stage so I'm going to cut through that and take it off in fact let's do that now because I've got my cutters here so I'll just cut through that and now I'm going to uh, peel it back as it were and then hopefully I can start prizing these two case halves open but uh, yeah this is proving quite tough to get into right so now that I've removed what is effectively the outer wall uh, I can see where the clips go into these holes on the inner wall and I can using my knife which has taken a little be bit of a beating uh, lift these clips these barbs out of their um, holes I could on the other side should be able to on to this side and uh, start getting the case halves apart so I'll just complete that 
Right, so this is now coming apart um, because I'm the barbs which sit in these holes are now out, uh, which is the bottom. There's the bottom. So I'll take the bottom off and I can now see the cells and actually we can now even see the markings on the cells. I'm very conscious of anything getting hot. It's not at the moment. Um, we have LGABF1 L1865. So I should be able to look that up and see who the manufacturer of that cell is. Now, very often these things are full of double-sided tape. Um, this one isn't, but they have used this uh, sort of silicon material to stick it. Now, the batteries happen to have broken away uh, from the bottom and they're attached to the top, but the board, the circuit board, is still attached to the bottom. So now I have a couple of wires. You can just see the red and black wires there sort of dangling between the two halves. So what do I do? Try and ease the batteries out and have them uh, stay with the bottom half. Yes, I probably will. And we are in. There's a little bit of uh, tape on here. There's some uh, double-sided sticky foam padding. There are some light pipes here uh, without well, actually just slots running up to the holes in the uh, top for the indicator. You can see there the indicator is lit up with one light. But I'm quite interested now in uh, trying to work out the manufacturer of these cells to see what we're dealing with. So here on the DIY Powerwalls forum, we have an entry by Mike, who's the administrator, um, saying, warning, this informa the information in this thread was obtained from various sources on the internet. Um, but it certainly these are LG brand cells. I suppose I should have guessed that from the LG bit. Now they're rated at 3350 milliamp hours. So that's how this power bank is getting the higher rating of, uh, what was it, 26800, I think it was. They're saying the voltage is a nominal 3.63 as opposed to 3.7. I mean, the point is these cells don't have a voltage. They are anything between 4.2, which is the highest voltage you charge them to, and about 3 point something, which is the lowest you dare take them. And then if you add up all the area under the curve, you can calculate a nominal voltage. But the cell will be at a whole range of different voltages at different stages in its discharge. So this is just a nominal. Uh, 4.2 maximum, standard for lithium ion. Uh, 2.5 cutoff, that seems rather low. These aren't going to be protected, so I don't know what he means by cutoff, but uh, I suppose that's the lowest point you dare take it. But uh, yeah, these are 3350, so they are high capacity cells. Okay, I've noticed two screws on the circuit board. Uh, I've got to go carefully here because I don't want to short anything out while I do this. But let's get this board out so that I can take everything out of this uh, shell. Is that the other screw there? Yes, it is. Um, so I'll lift those screws out before they short anything. Oh. My screwdriver is ever so slightly magnetic. That's good. Out you come. And uh, see if I can get this board out and we can take a look at the uh, devices on it. Right, we have two 8-pin uh, MOSFETs down here. So they're right next to the battery negative connection. So my guess is that they are the uh, cutoff for under voltage so that you can't discharge these cells below a certain voltage. Uh, we've got the four LEDs in there for state of charge, the button on the side there. On this side, we've got the two uh, micro USB B sockets mounted onto the board using these sort of angled um, header pin type things. Um, there's an inductor on the top, 2R2. There's also an inductor on the bottom, 1R0. There's a Holtec chip there, which I'm pretty sure is a microcontroller. But there are two very interesting chips on here, and they are this one, the IP5310, but on the other side, there's an IP5318. Uh, so what are they? Right, we've got a data sheet for the IP5318A, and I've also got a data sheet for the IP5310, but this one's in Chinese. So let's start with the 5318. This is a full integrated fast charge and discharge uh, system on a chip, is that? 
with 4.8 amp charger and adjustable voltage 18 watt boost. Um, fully integrated input and output system on chip. It's got Type C protocol, uh, USB Type C. I think that is got built-in Type C DRP protocol. It's got built-in Qualcomm Quick Charge two and three output fast charge protocol with DCP. I think that's dedicated charging port mode. Output voltage range is five volts to twelve volts. Well, we saw that twelve volts coming out. Uh, optimized for quick charge, 3.1 amps at 5 volts, 2 at 9 volts, 1.5 at 12. Those are similar numbers to what was printed on the bottom of the power bank. Um, so yeah, this is a system on a chip um, providing these outputs, type C, micro B, that's an input, type A, that's an output. And here we can see we've got four LEDs, which are probably the state of charge LEDs. We've got another couple of LEDs here which may not have been implemented in this power bank. And down at the bottom here, if you can see that, this is the battery array. Now there's a very similar diagram on the IP5310 uh, data sheet. So why they've got both of these chips in there, I'm not entirely sure. Um, they both seem to be doing similar things. The interesting is I can't read really what uh, is going on with the 5310 and how that differs from the 5318. But this power bank has both of them. So there it is, um, an eight cell power bank using higher capacity cells to get um, the higher milliamp hour rating uh, that's printed on the power bank case. Um, most of the clever stuff on this circuit board is done with these system on a chip. There are two of these uh, chips they, that seem to be very similar, but they must do slightly different things. It does look like there's also a microcontroller there as well, possibly. So the question is, what do I do with this? Do I attempt to reassemble it? It's never going to look very pretty with these uh, edge pieces all snapped off. Or shall I sort of half reassemble it, put it back in this uh, base section? Uh, the other thing I could do with these cells is I could put them in another power bank like the uh, QD188. I put eight cells in here recently, which came out of a eight cell power bank, which failed, uh, I think, if I remember rightly. But of course, these are higher capacity cells, so it would make this thing last longer. Um, or of course, I can put them in my favorite power bank, which is this old uh, Kidian one, the QD184, which you can no longer buy, which I think is an absolute travesty because it's the best power bank I've ever had. Uh, this again has uh, lower capacity cells. They could be replaced with these higher capacity LG cells. So a uh, big thanks once again to EC Technology who uh, sent this power bank to me. Um, I will put a link to this item on amazon.co.uk. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, this I think now is going to become a sort of bench top power supply of sorts. I've got some ideas for what I can do with that, but that'll be coming up in a forthcoming video. Um, but yeah, for the moment, that's it. Cheerio.